I don't know about you guys, but I like to start my day with a cup of coffee. It's so easy. I just press a button, pour it in a cup, and I'm done. However, it's these simple tasks that become very hard to do when you've lost a limb and now use a prosthetic device. See, when I'm holding that cup of coffee, there's a constant flow of information going from my fingertips to my brain, telling me things like, how hard am I squeezing? Is it slipping? Should I squeeze harder? We call this information sensory feedback, and it's exactly what's missing in prosthetic limbs. See, when a prosthetic user grabs that cup of coffee, they have no clue how hard they're squeezing. So it might be slipping, 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 till bang. It hits the floor, coffee goes everywhere, they're embarrassed, humiliated, and they end up losing a bit of trust in their device. And it's exactly for this reason that close to 50% of prosthetic users end up completely abandoning their device and not using it at all. So how do we fix this problem? Well, we can actually put sensors on the fingertips of the prosthetic hand that measure how hard it's squeezing. We can then relate this information back to the user in a different location, such as their upper arm. But how exactly do we transmit this information? So that's where my research comes in. I plan to directly compare two different methods of translating this information. The first of which uses a mechanical device to put pressure on their upper arm proportional to how hard they're squeezing. So if that coffee cup started to slip, they would feel a change in pressure and know to squeeze harder. Now the second method does something very similar but uses a vibration motor instead of that mechanical device. So again, if it starts to slip, they'd feel a change in vibration frequency on their arm, and they would know to squeeze harder. Now the main difference between these two techniques is the comparison between what is felt at the fingertips to what is felt by the user. So in that first method, it's a pressure at the fingertips and a pressure on their arm. So it's kind of matched in that way, it's intuitive. Now the second one, the device feels a pressure, but they feel a vibrational frequency. So it might take a little bit of extra brain power to map this information. I plan to directly compare these two techniques using day-to-day -day tasks such as pouring a cup of coffee. These results will show us what the most effective way of implementing this sensory feedback into commercial devices will be and get them into the arms of amputees as soon as possible. By effectively restoring this sense of touch to prosthetic users, I hope to increase their confidence and independency in their day-to-day -day lives and hopefully drive down that 50% abandonment rate. Thank you.